In this episode of OG55, the Italiano is joining me today on location. We are giving you our final D23 uh, Ultimate Fan Event Park predictions, the final predictions. We're going to get into what's the most likely and even some long shots. So we're, we're just going to, you know, kind of swing and see if we hit if we hit anything. You never know. Some of our long our shots bats. might... Yeah, swing our bats. Exactly. Just <laughs> swinging our bats up next year on OGBD5. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OGD5. I am joined, like I said, by the Italiano. It is good to have you back, sir. Welcome, welcome back. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. Glad to be back in the OG55 studio, even though I am not in my uh, regular uh, place setting at the moment. As you can see behind me, uh, I am currently staying at Walt Disney World. I've been here uh, for several days. I met up with uh, uh, Slimer and uh, his wife, and we got to hang out at Universal and a little bit of Disney. Now I'm, I have two days of uh, kind of solo at the parks, and tomorrow's my last day, and um, then I'm flying west for uh, Disneyland Bound and D23. Yes, yes, yes. If you can let everybody home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. You can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course, you can find me right here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and news. There he is. Mr. Sticky Icky is officially in the house. All right, George, let's talk about D23. These are the final predictions, okay? So what we'll do is we'll, we'll do this video, and then maybe like after the expo, we can even do a reaction and kind of see how close we got, you know, Ooh, to our... That's, yeah, that'd be a good one. You know what I'm saying? Kind of see how close we got. You never know. Some of our long shots might actually happen. You just never know. But um, let's start off with Disneyland. Let's do Disneyland Resort first. Likely to happen. What, what are you looking at here? In terms of announcements, what's the likelihood? So for me, um, a lot of people are predicting huge things for Disneyland. And when I say huge, I mean like multiple lands, <laughs> multiple attractions uh, because of Disneyland forward. I think that they're going to kind of go the opposite route because if they announce all that at once, if we remember going back, Bob Iger said they're leaving room to play for future animated movies or IP or what have you right. that could be incorporated into the Disneyland Resort. So I feel that they're not really going to go that route. They may lean a little more into that in the uh, D23 2026. But for me, I think the two, the two heavy hitters, I think all eyes for Disneyland actually is going to be probably uh, – aimed at dca and i think yeah. that's going to be for avatar and the avengers e-ticket yeah i would agree with you both of those things are like 90 percentile i mean look at this point if we don't get anything on the avengers e-ticket it's not happening it, it got yeah. it got canceled which we know from our sources multiple people are telling us right that the avengers e ticket is further along and we've been saying this for months that it's yeah. further along than you think it is so is we're going to get something. Scott Gustin had a great was was a guest on 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 a on a podcast recently. He was saying he's pretty certain we're going to hear more um information about the Avengers rise. So that's as close to 100% as you could probably get, I think. Um uh, Pandora exact almost exactly the same as the e-ticket, maybe even a little higher than the Avengers e-ticket. I mean then yeah, because they've been talking about Pandora a lot the past like year, year and a half, right? so we'll definitely nothing get more really and nothing really on it at least like with the avengers e ticket we kind of got some like you know some of the, like what the characters are going to be involved like the king thanos and everything kind of got a little little taste of like the the ride vehicle and everything all we really know of with pandora is that um, that one piece of concept art which they didn't even say if that's officially what it's going to look like 
and the possibility of that boat ride that's going to be designed like the uh, the Shanghai Pirates. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I think I think this time around we're going to get more detail. I think we're going to we're going to get more detail on that Shanghai uh, Pirates um, ride, right? In, in Pandora, um, we're going to get detail as to where this thing is going to go. You know, everyone's saying DCA, which you know it, it's looking like it's going to be DCA. But where is it going to go? Is it going to go into Hollywood Land? That's rumored, heavily rumored. Or is it going to go into the Symbol Lot, which is what you and I think is going to, where, where you and I think it's going to go? The Symbol Lot. Those are kind of like the two competing rumors right now. But I think we'll finally get news as to where it's going to go. We'll get details on it, the attraction, maybe some more concept art. So they'll flesh that out. Maybe even a model. You never know. Who knows? You know. Um, and like likewise with the avengers e-ticket we'll, we'll get to, we'll get to know the ride system a little bit um maybe the, a little bit more of the storyline maybe what heroes will be featured in it you know that kind of thing so those are the two biggies you know um i, I personally think pandora is going to be one of the models i think there's going to be multiple models because they've done it at the last d23 where they showcase like the ride vehicles for um the attractions at fantasy springs they also modeled tiana's bayou adventure uh, so they show different things. So I think, I think Pandora is going to be one of the models. Um, I have another theory of another model that they may showcase, but I'm going to wait till we dive into the Walt Disney world section of that. Okay. Interesting. Now Tiana's, you bring up Tiana's, I think we'll get an opening date or at least even in maybe an opening month ish or, you know, for Tiana's at Disneyland. I think we'll get more information on that. Um, in terms of Disneyland, though, in general, I mean, we're getting Tiana's. We'll get information on when that's going to open, I think. Um, but I think Disneyland is going to be really entertainment-based stuff. Uh, so I think we'll probably get – there's a good chance um, we'll get a nighttime parade coming back that's because right. we've got the 70, 70th anniversary coming up. So maybe paint the night, you know, something yeah, – probably paint the night, but we'll see. So maybe, like, paint the night. Uh, we might get a new daytime parade for the anniversary. Um, the Walt Disney animatronic uh, in Lincoln, which has been heavily rumored. We'll probably get news on that or maybe even see the animatronic. Uh, that's a possibility. And maybe some details with the 70s. Maybe we'll get like a logo, color scheme, what the decor is going to look like, stuff like that. So I think that's generally what we're going to get with Disneyland. I think it's going to be very entertainment-based, here and there, kind of knick stuff. But DCA is going to be the steak and potato, like the steak and potatoes. Like it's going to be like you know the lands, the e-ticket. That's all DCA, and it should be. DCA has been left out in the cold for a long time, really since 2012. We haven't gotten a huge investment in DCA. It's starting to fall behind. We need more stuff in DCA. So it's smart to focus on that park right now. It needs it. You know, Disneyland just got Galaxy's Edge just five years ago. That was what 14, 15 acres added to that park. You know, mm -hmm. they just got a brand new reimagined Toontown with a big um, attraction, Mickey and Minnie's. I mean, and, and, and Tiana's now as well on top of all that. So Disneyland's good for a, a little while right now. We may, and this is like, well, I'm going to leave Tomorrowland for a little bit. I'm going to leave Tomorrowland for okay. a little bit. I don't think that's a sure thing at all. Uh, okay. so so is, is, you, that gonna be, is that going to be part of your long shot? Kind of, yeah, yeah. Because we've been stood up, stood up at the altar many times with Tomorrowland. I think that's more of a long shot. Um, but, uh, but I think what you know, the 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 Walt animatronic uh, details on the 70th anniversary, maybe a daytime parade, maybe a nighttime parade coming back, um, maybe a new fireworks show. That's a possibility for the anniversary. You know, things like that. That's what we're looking at for Disneyland. But DCA, that's where the big boys are going to come out to play. Pandora, E-Ticket, that, you know, that, that's what I'm thinking. What about you, George? Yeah, uh, yeah for me, uh, for Disneyland, I echo your same thoughts. I think we're going to get, like, news on maybe a new daytime parade, nighttime parade for the 70th anniversary, um, decor, um, specialty desserts, snacks, food offerings, stuff like that. For Disneyland Park, that is. Um However, I do have something that I'm going to say for my long shot for Disneyland because there's still maybe a slight possibility, but I'll save that for when we uh, dive into that. But uh, other than that, I think, yeah, I think all eyes are going to be on DCA. Yeah, no, 100%. As far as for the Disneyland Resort. Yeah, and they really, really, really have to give us details on that stuff. Like they have to – we have to know where this Pandora thing is going, you know? And, and yeah, just saying it's – 
and just saying it's going into DCA isn't enough. Like we need to know where this thing is going, you know? Yeah. Like watch like, what we'll get there. They'll give us every single detail imaginable about the land, but they still won't tell us where this thing's going. <laughs> oh God, dude. I know. I know. I mean, hopefully we can kind of decipher based on like, if they give us a lot of concept art where it's like how it's, um, situated how it's placed yeah yeah you can kind of tell if it's a symbol lot or if it's like hollywood or you know elsewhere based on the art if they don't say it specifically you know yeah which i think they will they have to it's too far along they have to yeah exactly and then we'll get details on that on that shanghai boat ride thing which is perfect for dca by the way dca needs kind of like those family kind of attractions you know that would be a perfect e-ticket i think for dca um, and DCA doesn't have any kind of, uh, like, I mean, other than like Grizzly River Run, which is a rapids ride, but I mean, they don't have any kind of like uh, boat ride or anything of that nature. Nothing. No, no. So that would be great for that park. Uh, you know, absolutely. So, in terms of long shots for Disneyland Resort, um, mm-hmm. so my long shots, this is interesting. Uh, friend of the channel. Peter from Ordinary Adventures made a tweet today. Great tweet, by the way. A huge list of all, all of all of the possibilities going into D23, right? And a lot of it was like what we talked about, right? But one of his long shots was Disney announcing a third gate. Now, this isn't the first time I've heard this. Slimer, our friend Slimer. Slimer thinks- is, he is like dead on set. That he's saying for it to be successful to kind of get fans back into that realm of being on Disney side and taking them seriously, not necessarily say specifically like what it is. They can kind of tease that, but he, he believes by solidifying that there is going to be a third gate and Disney kind of rubber stamping it. Right. That would get Disney back in the good graces with the fandom. Well, that's what I think this is. I think this is the move. If if Daddy Josh, if your team, if you and your team are watching this by any chance, this is the move. You green light. Uh, you give us the hardcore, the, the green lit stuff. So you give us a lot of detail on Pandora, a lot of detail on the Avengers ticket, a lot of detail on on all the entertainment, and all that stuff coming to Disneyland. If you want a blue sky, something, the 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 third gate is what you do, because the third gate's yes. at least fifteen years out or more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's so your what, blue sky stuff. That's sure. your blue sky. You say, you know what else we're thinking about? A third gate in that Toy Story lot. Imagine the possibility. See, it's far enough away now where you can have fun with blue sky, and, and that's great. And you just had like big announcements that were concrete with Pandora Avengers. So you can get away with now saying, hey, you know what? Let's have some fun. This is some blue sky stuff. And with a third park, which is you know 15 years out or so, you can get away with that a lot more, you know? That it's it's a long shot. It's a long shot, but I'm telling you, Peter's thinking maybe. Okay, uh, Slimer's thinking it's a possibility, dude. And we're coming off of the heels of the Disneyland Forward thing getting approved. They might want to. They might want to kind of, you know. Well, and if you also remember going way back, Tom Corliss from WDWNT had said that that's the, the whole purpose of Disneyland Forward that was the end game was for the third gate right exactly exactly i I believe that absolutely so that would be that would be a huge win that would be a massive win um another long shot uh, for me personally would be zootopia uh coming to dca DCA. now the reason why this is a long shot is because dca is already getting pandora Uh it's already getting the avengers e-ticket to go in there and 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 now give a green lit concrete. Hey, it's also getting Zootopia. That's a lot. That's a little bit of like over cannibalization for not saying that DCA doesn't need it. It does. But, yeah, it, but right. at one time at one expo. So I think that if they do announce a Zootopia, that might be another kind of like beyond big thunder thing. Yeah. Like this is what we're thinking about. What do you think about Zootopia coming in a DCA and leaving it, at, leaving it at that. Yeah. So third park, and Zootopia are my two long shots for um, for DCA. Let's say you uh, – we'll, we'll do DCA, then we'll go to Disneyland. DCA, okay. So for my DCA, um, a couple a couple long shots. Um, one of my long shots for DCA also kind of ties into Disneyland, so I'll save that one for last. My first uh, long shot for DCA is adding um, Coco. Oh, to- I forgot about that. 
to DC. And now I, I made that a long shot because there hasn't really, like there is talks of, uh, <laughs> as Bricky likes to tease me at Coco. Um, Coco. <laughs> into dca but like nothing like has been kind of like rumbling in the 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 rumor mill as far as like that that's officially going into dca um but i think that would fit in with the hispanic and and latin culture it ties into pixar pier and and coco i mean that's like yeah. A phenomenal IP to turn into an attraction. I'm telling you, that would be perfect for DCA. How do you have, I said it so many times, but I'm going to say it again, because not everyone watches every video. How do you have a theme park about California without a land about Latin culture? You know, and I agree with you. I think it's a long shot because I think Pandora is more solidified. And I think the Avengers thing is more solidified. I think adding a whole now Coco area. Again, that's a lot. That's you know? kind of like, doing what, what your suggestion with Zootopia. It is, I, it'd, yeah. It'd be too much at once. A at once. And if they do do that, that's crazy. But I don't think they will, you know? But yeah, that's a long shot. That's when they have to do, though. You build, you build a beautiful, like, little Mexican village. I said it so many times. A beautiful Mexican village based on the movie Coco. You can have these outdoor food vendors. You know, it can kind of be like DCA's New Orleans Square. You smell the food. Mm -hmm. You got the mariachis. Oh, God, it would be perfect. It would be absolutely perfect for that park. We'll see. We'll see, you know. But, yeah, def definite long shot, but it would be beautiful if they did it. Another long shot for me for DCA is <laughs> I would love to see a Toy Story Land go right next door <laughs> to the Pixar Place Hotel. And here's why. Not oh, the yeah. Oh, so y'all ain't gonna let nobody disrespect the West Coast, huh? <laughs> Not the fact that I actually want to see a Toy Story Land over there. I just want to see that announcement so I could see the vein on your forehead. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I'll be so pissed off. Yeah, because it's like, for me, Toy Story Land... Like I said, like before, it's not a bad land. I enjoyed it. It's really cute. I think Slinky Dog is a great coaster, you know? And I think I think Disneyland Resort needs more family coasters like that. It's just when, when, you're, short, when you're short on space and you spend all that political cachet trying to get that, that, that land rezoned and that's what you put in there, I, I think you need, I think based on the effort put in for that land, we need more ambition. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, absolutely. And my final long shot for DCA, and I saved this one last because it could possibly tie into a long shot for Disneyland once we move over there. And that's adding the country bears into Grizzly Peak. Oh, that's another good one, dude. You're right. Ooh, that's kind of like, yeah, man. I'm, I'm kind of like, that's interesting. Like, that's almost like a, um, a wobbler. Yeah, because there's a good chance that that might happen because th they've done a lot of Country Bear stuff lately. They recently uh, put either new animatronics or refurbished animatronics and at the Magic Kingdom. So you know they like to do things in twos over here with, at Disney. We, I'll, you know, I'll say this: I feel like the Country Bears are going to come back to Disneyland. It's just not knowing what way and which park. But I think yeah. one way or the other, they're coming back. Yeah, yeah. My money was on DCA because of the Big Al statue and stuff like that. But they're adding the Country Bear Barbecue or the Hungry Bear Jamboree. What Hungry Bear? What is it? Hungry Bear Country Hungry Jamboree? Bear, Hungry Bear Barbecue Jamboree. Something like see, that. See, see, me personally, they should have just called it the Country Bear Barbecue. I know. Like I know them and their names. You know, it's just yeah. uh, it's or crazy. No, or maybe it is the Country Bear Barbecue. Maybe the Hungry Bear completely got renamed. I can't remember. It's something like that, though. Yeah, it's something like that. But, you know, so we're getting it over there, you know, for Hungry Bear, you know, getting rethemed. It's a wobbler. We might we might see a bigger Country Bear presence, you know. So interesting. Yeah, that's a good one. Now, for Disneyland, and this is actually kind of a wobbler, too, Tomorrowland. Like, I don't think it's, like, crazy. Like, I think there's a better chance of getting a refreshed Tomorrowland than there is a Zootopia announcement for DCA. Because Utopia is is like built from the ground up, like this massive land, e-ticket attached to it, the whole thing, right? I think any new Tomorrowland we get is going to be kind of like a cosmetic thing. Uh, and kind of a band-aid for like the next maybe decade or something like that. So it's possible 
I, I'm kind of leaning more towards long shot though, because how many times have we been here with Tomorrowland? You know, um, it's a, it's 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 a wobbler, but leaning long shot. But what what say you? So for me, my long shot. I'm actually going to go back to yours, what you were saying for DCA, but I'm going to go, and I know this is probably going to be the unpopular opinion. I prefer it in DCA. I know you would prefer it in DCA, but I'll explain why I'm mentioning. The long shot would be, I wonder if they will put Zootopia into Disneyland. Now, here's why. Does Zootopia fit better in Disneyland than DCA? Absolutely not. If It belongs in DCA. However, if you were to put in Frozen where the Stitch and Lilo parking lot is, what have you always said? That seems completely out of place. Redundant. Because you already have a fantasy land, but then you're going to have a full-fledged frozen land. If you do so Zootopia, you don't have to worry about that because it's its own space. It's its own land. Plus, Zootopia would be coming off the back of Critter Country. Right. And on top of that, tied to D23 being that they are going to mention about Pandora and Avengers and it won't overflow DCA, that would be a nice connection for Disneyland because I believe they had mentioned they are going to mention details of Zootopia 2 at the studio panel Friday night. So depending oh, on what they announce for the sequel of Zootopia, that may tie into the land. That's a possibility, dude. That's a possibility. I mean, that's definitely... Wow, that's interesting. But that's that's a long that's my long shot. For that's Disney. a long shot. Yeah, I I feel like they want it to go into DCA because it feels because they have the, the the Zootopia meet and greet over there at DCA right. and stuff. But you make a good argument. You make a good argument. That's fascinating. So I think we can both agree though. I think this is going to be DCA's time to shine when it comes yeah. to Anaheim. Yeah. Um, oh, also we might hear more stuff about Downtown Disney. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked about it with Danny from Five Fires on the show with the Esplanade. They have a lot of unused space there with like the ticket boost. A few months ago, we talked to Danny about it. Yeah. There could be they, some, they, they have to clear something up. I mean, like that's just, they're empty buildings just sitting there. Yeah. I, I'm, and they might not announce it this time around, but I feel like they're going to address that, you know, and, and a lot of the tile work or the, the brick work or whatever it's on the outdated. ground. Oh, it's outdated. It's looking really dirty and shoddy. It, it's, it's, janky. it's <laughs> yeah, it looks really, really bad, and they need to like refurb that whole middle area, the whole esplanade, and really get it looking nice again. And part of that, I think, would be removing some of those ticket booths. They're just it's a, it's a relic of the past at this point. Not to get rid of all of them, but there's too many. You know, what I'm saying so. I think that's a possibility. We might hear something it's, like that, especially since people just do everything online. Or on their phones through the that, app. It's like people don't. I mean, how many people really have the physical tickets anymore? It's exactly, like, exactly. I had Theme Park Conductor, friend of the channel, by the way. We love Theme Park Conductor, and he was on here the other day, and he was talking about Universal Hollywood, about how they're going to build a new hotel, and the entry by the Globe, you know, the Universal Globe. Mm -hmm. And he was asking me, "Do you think it's a possibility they're going to remove some of the Universal ticket booths?" When they when they figure that whole thing in with the hotel, I'm like, you know what? Probably, I think even Universal is probably looking at getting rid of some of the booths. You know, with everything online now, you don't really need a whole bunch of them. So, yeah, I think it's a possibility. I don't know what they're going to put in there. Um, they might just expand D, uh, Downtown Disney out. You got to remember too, Portos, as far as we know, is still coming. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to bring the infrastructure <laughs> with that because the demand for Portos is huge. So you're going to have to, you can't just throw that into the La Brea bakery. You have to build, uh, you got to build a new thing. That's going to, that's going to like accommodate the demand for that. I mean, these portos things, even out here in my area, the lines are crazy at downtown Disney. It's going to be nuts. So that, that's not something. And that's the thing. A lot of fans are like, Oh, it's dead. They're not bringing portos in because we haven't heard anything. Portos isn't like just bringing in like, you know, a sunglass hut. Okay. There is a lot involved in a Portos. It's like building a new in and out, like in and out, you know, it's crazy. The drive throughs like clog up the streets and everything out here in California. Like anytime they build a new one, it's like crazy lines. You have to, when, when, with Portos is the same way. You have to build, you have to build whatever they're going to, wherever they're going to do it. You're going to have to build in that like 
the queuing area for it, a sizable structure for it. It's not just about plopping it in there. You know, it's a little more work than just your average run of the mill store, you know? So yeah. we might hear more on that. So we'll see. What about downtown Disney? What are, you, what are your thoughts on that, George? Uh, as far as for downtown Disney, um, we may get some kind of like rerouting of things um, depending on what's going to go on with the rezoning for uh, Disneyland forward. We may even, they may not like stay on too much of it. Um, this is actually a long shot, but they may kind of dive into of where the uh, Eastern gateway is going to kind of, uh, well, we know where it's going, but maybe like how it's going to look, how it's going to be structured a little bit. Where are the new parking structures going to go? What's going to be rerouted? What's going to be rezoned? Um, we may get a little taste of that. You know what? I, that's a good point. We, that, that actually might be something that is more in the like more probable kind of column, I think, because like for me personally, at least, because I think that like that's been something like kind of like the Avengers e-ticket that's been sort of talked about for so long. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they might they might throw that in there and say, hey, the new parking structure opens in 2028 or whatever and 2027. This is the this is the schematic or this is what it's gonna look like. It's possible, you know. The only reason why I put it in my long shot is I just don't know if they'll mention those kind of things during the expo presentation. But at the same time, they brought up Target several years ago. So I mean, if they brought up Target into a a Disney Parks presentation. I think anything will. That would be the only reason why I would put it in the long shot. Yeah. If they do announce that, it would have to be sort of connected to whatever, like, exciting thing they're doing. So, like, for yeah, example. It just can't just be like, hey, here's the rezoning, you know, for the. Exactly. So, if it's if it's connected to Avatar, if it's connected to a Zootopia or something like that, like, okay, we're building this Eastern Gateway to make way for this new shiny thing, right? Yeah, I can exactly. see them kind of packaging it like that, maybe, you know? Yeah. But that's fascinating. All right. Well, let's move over to Florida now, George. This is kind of your territory. That literally, you're in Florida <laughs> right now. Uh, what are your likely for My Florida? Likelies. Well, I had mentioned it earlier about them uh, having a uh, Pandora kind of uh, floor model that would be showcased at the Anaheim Convention Center. Uh, and I said uh, there's another one that I do believe. And I think that they'll showcase more of the Tropical Americas for Animal Kingdom. Okay. And during the time of this recording, I actually went to Animal Kingdom today and I rode Dinosaur and um, It's Tough to Be a Bug, um, probably for my very last time. I just had, it was both both that show and ride as part of my childhood growing up, going to Walt Disney World every year, sometimes multiple times a year. And I just had a experience it one last time because I, I think this is truly going to be my last opportunity to do so. Um, I think that we'll get a more flesh, fleshed out what the land is going to look like as far as for the tropical Americas and uh, maybe an in-depth kind of uh, storyline for Indiana Jones and maybe the ride system for Encanto, which I think we're all anticipating that it's going to be like the Mystic Manor. Trackless. Um, trackless kind of dark ride, which is perfect, I think, for Animal Kingdom because they don't have anything over there as of yet. And then with Indiana Jones, you're going to have that same ride system, the same track layout that was for Dinosaur, but they're doing a completely different, excuse me, storyline than what is over at Disneyland Park. And this is going to be based off of the uh, the Mayan culture. So I'm very right. interested. I'm more interested in that than anything because I, I, as far as like for the tropical Americas, because... I think with Encanto, we can kind of get an idea that it's going to be kind of like based off of segments of the movie, sort of speak in the music. Well, with Indiana Jones, they're going in this with a blank slate, and we don't know what that is. Yeah, yeah, no, Indian, yeah, Indiana Jones will probably get more, more of that backstory, like you said with the Mayan stuff. Um, that's interesting. That's gonna be kind of cool, I think, actually, to kind of see how how they do it. You know, like based on this other kind of angle, it's kind of reminds me a little bit of like, you know, Tokyo, how it's like it's like Disneyland's, but it's not. It's a little yeah. bit of a different take, you know, and I and I think that if they break up the tropical Americas in phases, I don't know if that's th what they're going to do, but I have a feeling Indiana Jones would be first because they already have the building. They already have the structures. They're already knocking down trees, um, you know, surrounding the building. Again, you have the track layout, you have the ride vehicles. 
all they have to do is just kind of fill in those gaps with the the meat and potatoes, so to speak. In Kanto, they're basically doing from the ground up. They have to rip out the whole entire Chester and Hester's Dino Rama, and they're literally building up from the ground. And I yeah. think that may take a little bit more time. So if they open it in phases, I think Indiana Jones is going to open first. Yeah, I would put the the Tropical Americas definitely in the for sure column. We're definitely going to get more on that. Um, maybe a model at the expo. Yeah. You know, um, I would agree with you. I think Encanto will be similar to Mystic Manor. Um, Indiana Jones, I'm very curious about the the storyline, how they kind of tackle that. A lot of people don't like Indiana Jones in that park because it has nothing to do with animals. But does Expedition Everest really have anything to do with animals? Not really. I mean, Animal Kingdom is sort of like, it is an animal park, but it's also kind of like a world showcase in a way where you kind of like go and like you're transported into these other countries. Africa, and locales. Asia, yeah. Exactly. So it's not always about the animals, you know, not everything in that park is about the animals. It's also about the cultures and stuff that exist around that stuff. So um, that's interesting. But with, with Indiana Jones, I'm kind of curious how they tie all that stuff together, how they tied into the park. It's a huge upgrade, though, for Animal Kingdom. I mean, that dinosaur ride, it's OK. It's OK, but it's not. I, I think I think for me, it's just more of the. Um nostalgia purpose like oh yeah childhood memories but as far as the <laughs> the execution of it goes it's definitely it definitely it's definitely showing its age for sure it's definitely a late 90s ride and it, it's i hate to say it it's time for the dinos to go extinct well and the thing too is it's interesting how you how you have a ride system and the ip and the music change the experience completely right excuse me um for example tower of terror right i mean literally at dca tower of terror you know it had it was a different theme different music you know same ride system you swapped out the theme you swapped out the music and you changed the way that the ride is programmed and it's a completely different experience than it was before right um indiana jones adventure at disneyland and Dino over there in Animal Kingdom. I mean, technically, they're like the same rides, the same ride system. I think even almost the exact same layout and everything. But look at the difference in the experiences, though, when you have the Indiana Jones music and the theming and all that compared to the Dino Institute or whatever. And It's and, night and day. And, real, and there's more detail shown in Indiana Jones Adventure, where when you go on Dinosaur, a lot of it is pitch black. It doesn't show anything. Right. So you don't see any of those details until you actually hit some of the dinos, which it actually it's very dark. It, I mean, it kind of darker than what would be normal, even back into the, the Cretaceous period or even back into the just the dino time. It, it, I seriously doubt it would be that dark. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> even with a, a meteor and uh, an asteroid impact and stuff you're still going to be able to see like what is in front of you before you get blown to smithereens. Well, and then you also have like, you don't have the, like all the, pol like the light pollution that you do in modern c civilization. Right. So uh, back then there was no smog or anything like that. So you had the moon shining down the moonlight, you know, and it, yeah, there's a brightness to that, especially when you're not dealing with like the, the other light pollution that you deal with in the modern day. So you're, you're right. It wouldn't be that pitch black. Yeah. Um, but Disney like, has a heart. Go ahead. Really quick. Hold, just hold your thought. What they really should have done was take example by the, uh, the dino diorama in the Disneyland railroad. Oh, absolutely. That's the route that they should have went. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's something about dinosaur that feels kind of cartoony to me. I mean, I'm all, technically it's based on the cartoon, I guess now. Right. right? But I don't know. I, they should have gone in a more realistic route. The dinosaur uh, primeval world at Disneyland on the railroad would have been perfect. That, that energy, that tone is what you want to do. It, it, it doesn't feel right on that dinosaur ride. It just doesn't. Yeah. And I feel that it was a missed opportunity. I think Disney could have done something really good with dinosaurs because dinosaurs would still fit into the realm of animal kingdom. 
because they were animals that existed, you know, not in our lifetime, but they, you know, fossils and bones are being discovered here, you know, all over the place that, you know, they were, it's a discovery kind of thing. So oh, yeah. I kind of wish that they would still be able to keep the dinosaur concept, but just do it right. But I know that Disney's not going to do it without tying it into an IP. I kind of wish that they would have went the route with Indiana Jones, that they could have incorporated dinosaurs in the storyline. Well, and that's a possibility, though. See, I wouldn't count that out. I wouldn't count that out. Whether it be Indy is looking for a lost dinosaur egg or something like that, you know, something along those lines, or even like Dial of Destiny with time travel. You know, there might be a time traveling element in well, this attraction. We don't and know. That, and that kind of ties into the Mayan culture with the Mayan calendar. Yes, exactly. Exactly. There might be something there. I don't know. We're spitballing here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I wouldn't completely rule that out. You, you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, but then, yeah, that, that whole thing is a for sure thing at the expo. I mean, we're going to get a lot more detail on that. They're really moving. They even have like the, the staging area for to start on it. I mean, yeah, it's already, it's, oh, yeah, they got it already. All they're waiting for is for um, uh, uh, Josh tomorrow to get his um, a hand out of the hair gel and click his fingers to say go, you know. But <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, also, too, I think we might – and I know a lot of people are saying I hope they don't hear anything about this because they really don't want this to happen. But being that we haven't heard anything from this since Destination D23, I think we might get some uh, – locked in information about Zootopia going into the tree of life, replacing uh, it's tough to be a bug. I'm hoping. <clears throat> yeah. I'm one of the people I'm kind of like a hater when, when it comes to that, I'm hoping that they, that was like a filler announcement that isn't going to come to pass. Yeah. Cause they haven't yeah. mentioned anything of that as of yet. Like if really, if they wanted to do it, that could have been done already. It could have been open and operated. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was, wasn't that JPEG? No, that was that was tomorrow, and that's right. No, but when, I mean, like Chapek when he was CEO, though, still, right? I believe he was still CEO oh, with that, um, like two years see, ago. Destination D twenty three was November twenty twenty three. Last year, yeah. Oh no, then it was Bob Iger. But you know what? I, I think, don't. I think honestly, they wanted to kind of feel the crowd of how they felt about. It. Yeah, it, that felt a little blue sky to me. I don't know why, well, but it did. And here's the thing. That's when uh, uh, Bruce Vaughn came on stage, and he was the one that made the announcement. But he didn't seem too happy about that. A so lot. I think he just kind of did his thing. He kept his mouth shut. But after they were done, he was like, okay, there's things that has to change. We can't go this route. You're asking me back to be doing a Zootopia show in the Tree of Life. No, and at, and at face value, it sounds like it would make sense, right? Animals, nature, in a tree. Okay, cool. It doesn't make sense because what are you going to have in there? You're going you're gonna to get in there. You're going to get you're going to get Nick and Judy, and and you're going to have cop, you're going to have cop cars in there. What are you going to do? What's the story going to be? I mean, I could see if it was like, you know, animals like Bambi or something, or yeah. animals like Chip and Dale, you know. But like Zootopia is so. Like, I'm not even against Utopia coming into Animal Kingdom. Like, if they want to do the land, and I know a lot of fans don't like that, but I'm open to the land. You know, you just put it far, far enough. You, you make it secluded enough where it's not, you know, like a lot of light pollution and everything, you know, spilling over and everything else. You know, you have to make it where it kind of like is its own little area. That's fine. But when you put it in the tree of life, when you go into this tree, and then you have this whole like metropolis or something in there. Or I don't know how you'd even do that. That's just a weird decision. I felt very blue sky to me. I think that thing is dead. A lot has changed since then. Yeah. Barbara Boza has gone. We got a lot of new people in there. We got Joe Rody in there again. Even if it's like at a limited kind of capacity, he's still in there influencing. I wouldn't be shocked that that was canceled. Yeah. Especially since Joe Rody is going to be there. Joe Rody is going to be at D23 because he's getting honored with the Disney Legends Award. Do they honestly think that Joe Rody is going to be there in the same building, maybe not on the same night, but in the same building, and they announce Zootopia 
is going into the tree of life. It, his park, his baby. This is not going to happen. No, and actually, I think you're right. I think that alone, Rhodey coming back, that alone killed that project. And it probably killed Zootopia as a land in that park as well because he did not like that idea. Yeah. He, he was on record saying he does not like the idea of Zootopia coming into that park. So the land itself is probably dead too. And the tree of life thing. Yep, I bet you we're not going to hear anything on that Zootopia stuff. Not with Rhodey back in town. There's no way. There is no way. Which is fine. You know, I the man's a genius. I, and, and I hope they don't. That's the one announcement I hope we don't get. I don't think we will. Because I was scratching my head. Normally, I, I, I say, you know what? I'm optimistic. I don't really know how I feel about it. But okay, I'll go along with it. This, I felt like I got vibes with that Zootopia show going into the Tree of Life. The same vibes I got with that damn Star Cruiser. It's interesting. Yeah, I got vibes like that when they announced Pixar Pier. It bummed me out for a while. I was like, oh, shit. I, you know, you try to be optimistic and, you know, you try to like, okay, you know, when when life hands you lemonades, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade, right? But I was like, kind of like, what? Pixar, yeah. Pier, what? You know, it's one of those kind of announcements. But I don't, or, I think or, with Rody back, or, we're going to have to worry about any of this, dude. Or if life hands you batter, make cake. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Cake, cake. <laughs> hold on, hold on. Where, where's my cake drop? Oh, shoot. Where's my cake drop? Uh-oh. Oh, oh, here it is. Here's my cake drop. Cake! There we go. There we go. There we go. Yeah, but so interesting. Now, what are your thoughts on Beyond Big Thunder? Is this going to be a definite thing, or is this going to be a kind of like a another Blue Sky thing? Or maybe they don't even really talk about it. Well, I definitely feel like they're going to talk about it because when you look at the Horizons poster, Big Thunder is plastered huge on that thing. And if you kind of look at the scope of how they have the icons of each park and what have you, you have the Tree of Life. They kind of made it kind of not small, but it was kind of in there. They have the Mickey's Fun Wheel for DCA. But Big Thunder, they have it massively like in front. Like, it is noticeable. So I definitely think that they're going to talk about it. Now, the big question is, is that going to fall under the the tomorrow umbrella of Blue Sky? Or is are we going to get the official, okay, this is what's going to go in there? Because when they first announced it as the Blue Sky, which people didn't even know that's really what it was, everyone was walking out thinking, okay, we're getting Coco and Kanto and Villains beyond big thunder people didn't know really what they were seeing but being that being that uh Encanto is moving over to animal kingdom that completely shuts that part out i still think coco has the potential to still go into beyond big thunder i don't think i, don't, I wouldn't i wouldn't knock coco out completely. i hope it does i hope it does i think that that would fit well you know, we have kind of a, we have in our frontier land, we have kind of a Spanish, uh, Latin influences sort of bleeding into frontier land. I think it fits beautifully. You know, we got the Zorro a restaurant, which you, which you call the Zocalo. What do you call it? Oh, oh the, um, uh, oh gosh, what, what's the name of the restaurant? It's the, um, Oh, I call it the uh, the Benicio del Toro because I can't yeah. ever pronounce it. <laughs> I know you can never pronounce it. I always call it the Zorro restaurant, but you know, but yeah, it's it's very much like that, and that's been there for a long time. I think that's been there since Michael Eisner, to be honest with you. But they've got been leaning into the Spanish, and actually, to be fair, I think even Zorro had a big presence on like the um, on Frontierland, on, like on opening day at Disneyland and stuff. I think he was riding his horse around the land, things like that. So it has a history of that. Um, and then we have we we celebrate the uh, the Day of the Dead over there at Frontierland with um I, I've seen um, Mirabelle from Encanto over there so that Spanish Latin culture or, uh, culture and influence has has permeated into Frontierland a lot more in recent years which I think is great it's a great direction I wouldn't be surprised George I think you might be on some Coco might be what goes beyond Big Thunder. And I know, I know people are saying, well, there's a Coco uh, carousel go supposedly going into Animal Kingdom. I know. But they, didn't, but, but they never confirmed that, though. They never really, that was, I think that's just somewhat, because we see kind of like a, a dome shape where that's where I believe the Triceratops spin area is. Right. <clears throat> I don't know if they'll, 
I mean, it may be a carousel, but I mean, it may just be a pavilion. Right. You know, it may, may be a, a seating pavilion or it might be a meet and greet. You know, it may be a little theater. Yeah, you know? we don't know. We don't know. Yeah, they, they probably have to do Beyond Big Thunder, though. I think they've teased yeah. it for far too long for them to just like skip over it now. You know, yeah. now, how would you now we're going to be there. If, yes. we're, if I'm sitting there next to you, George, and mm. DeMauro comes out on that stage and he says, look what we're getting beyond Big Thunder and this fucking villain's land. You are going to lose your mind. See, then that's when you will, as I said, this is my Disney Super Bowl. If, if they announce officially a villain's land going in there, because I was heavy dead set on that, even before they did that blue sky nods, but this was like over 15 years of me having that idea without the fact of getting thrown out of the Honda center or, or arrested. I am going to literally stand up on that chair and I will be shot in like like John Cusack in in uh, the movie um uh, what's that movie where he holds up the uh, the boombox? Oh, uh, I forgot the name, but I know what you're talking yeah, about. But that, that 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 movie that that's gonna be <laughs> that's gonna be me. Now, if he comes out and he announces a Radiator Springs light going into Beyond Big Thunder, then. Without the sake of being thrown out of the Honda Center or arrested, I'm going to be standing up on my chair, <laughs> shouting profanities. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, they can't do that. I'm telling you right now, if anyone at Disney is listening, if that's what they want to do beyond Big Thunder, after you've hyped this thing up for so many years now, and you want to put in not even the full Cars Land, the rumor is just the attraction. It's not even the full thing that what DCA has. You're only getting the ride. If you're if you think you're going to put that back there and fans are going to go nuts over that, I'm telling you, it's going to be bad. there's going to be backlash. You have to put something in there that's new, innovative, unique to Florida. Exactly. You have to. You have to. So I think a combination of the Coco stuff, maybe mixed in with like some Villains Land stuff. Oh, Chef's Kiss. That would get the crowd hyped like you wouldn't believe. Oh, absolutely. And um, by the way, Disney, I will not be doing that because I've been wanting to see this in person. So I'm not going to jeopardize my chances of getting thrown out. You can't, you, you won't get that away from that, that easily. You, you can't trick the Italiano. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, for me, for to put something that you are calling and, and, and Bruce, Va uh, Bruce Vaughn is tied to this project. If his name is under that, connection of putting a an over uh well it's it's over 10 years but by the time the actual attraction would be open you're probably looking at 15 to 20 right because right now it's 14 no I'm, I'm sorry right now it's 12 years old 12 years old right so by the time they announce it break ground 15 build it, 16 years yeah there's no way. Now, the only way that they may get away with cars, I mean, I still think the IP doesn't fit well in Magic Kingdom. Me too. But aesthetically, with the rock work and everything, it does. The only way that they can maybe get across it is do not go the Radiator Springs Racers route. Because you also have the ride system with Test Track. And actually, speaking of which, Test Track 3.0, I think we're going to get news on that as well. Well, that's true. Um, yeah, that's a given, I think. So to make two announcements with both Test Track kind of ride systems, I think if they do something with cars, it'll be something completely different. It'll have the same rock work, but I don't think it would be the same ride. So yeah, they may go like an Indiana Jones kind of route. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see how that whole thing kind I of pans. I still don't want it there. I think that'd be a huge... Putting a Radiator Springs Racers in the Beyond Big Thunder is what putting in a Toy Story Land in the Simba parking lot would be for you. Yeah. It, it would just be... It, it seems so cut and paste. It's, it's lazy. And you're putting it in a spot that was heavily hinted at heavily you, you you threw all these blue sky ideas at fans 
villain's land and this and that, right? And then you go and do that. And then you go in and you just take something from DCA and cut it in half, basically, and give you the, 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 the half-assed version. And then you throw that in there. Total laziness, creative bankruptcy. That, that, that looks so bad. You have to go in there and put something brand new in there that's 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 new to Florida that's new n- never been done anywhere and and that's gonna and, impress people and I'm telling you right now bro and this was my idea at the time when I drew I wish I, I I have that paper I have the paper I have my little screwy ass drawings because <laughs> I can't draw worth shit and I have it dated but one of my ideas was building a bald mountain and you have a gigantic Chernabog animatronic at the top that his wings and clothes, it's rain, wind, and weather resistant. You could put him in and out of the mountain if need be. And then at nighttime, you hit the music. You get those projections of like the spirits and the souls rising from the yeah, graveyard. Like flame effects, you know. Flame effects. You hear that music. And then everyone looks up. The wings open, and there you have this big, massive Chernabog animatronic. I, I swear, if Disney does that, I can guarantee you they watch this channel because I don't think anyone else had mentioned it other if than Di- on, on here. Yeah, if Disney does that, you you make you dwar- you almost kind of dwarf Dark Universe in a lot of ways. Like you make you make, you almost make that look like wow. You know, like if you can pull off that, right? If you can make a villain's land with a giant chair in a bog and the whole thing, dude, that is out of control insane. That would be incredible. Will they do that? I don't know. That's what they, that, but that's the kind of stuff they need though for they Beyond Big Thunder. They have to hit it a home run. They can't phone it in. You know what I'm saying? They cannot phone this in. So we'll see. I don't have much faith for, aside from the test track kind of 3.0 thing, I don't think Epcot's going to get much. I really don't. I think Epcot has gotten a lot of investment in the past few years, and it it, it had those construction walls forever. I don't think Epcot's going to get anything they're major. Gonna wanna, they're going to want to let it breathe a little bit. I think before. so too. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. The only news I think that we're going to get at Epcot is the Test Track 3.0. We're yeah. probably going to get you know a concept of what the ride is about because it's going to be based off of. Uh, World of Motion, which was the retired attraction that Test Track originally replaced. Um, so it's going to give that more natural, organic feel to it. So, we'll, um, so yeah, I think that's what we'll get with Epcot. However, I do have three long shots for Epcot, though. Okay. Um, one long shot for Epcot is the Imagination Pavilion. Okay. Uh, I don't know how long that they're going to have to drag this thing out. We know that Figment is staying. He's basically the mascot of Epcot, which is fine. I love Figment. There's a meet and greet, his merchandise, the popcorn buckets, the magnets, you know, all that stuff. But as far as the, the, the attraction goes, I also wonder, too, if during the studio presentation, if we get any kind of hints at that Figment movie. Because I think if we get any more notion of a Figment movie, then we would start to know the direction of what is to be with the Imagination Pavilion as far as the Figment ride goes. Right. Yeah. No, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see if we hear anything about that. Um, because that makes that, in Disney's eyes, that makes that character more relevant because there's a new movie on the horizon, so to speak. So I could see that, you know what I'm saying? So that's interesting. So that, you think that's a long shot, though? That's a long shot. I don't think they're going to mention that just yet. Um, if they mention the movie on Friday, you know, when the movie might open, if is it going to be a Disney Plus exclusive, is it go, excuse me, going into theaters, I think then the Imagination Pavilion will be mentioned at D23 2026. But that's why I say it's a long shot, because it's still a possibility. My other long shot is... Inside Out going into that Wonders of Life Pavilion. I mean, that's a perfect IP for Epcot because it's an IP, so Disney makes a bajillion dollars on the merchandise and stuff, but it's edutainment. You can do go that educational route, so it, it's perfect for a park like Epcot, you know? Yeah. So. And my final uh, long shot for Epcot would be um, another uh, country pavilion. Yeah, that, that's my long shot, too, for Epcot. It's another country. Um 
which country i don't know maybe brazil that's a possibility yeah. you know but um that would be really cool actually that would be really cool if they did do that but uh i don't i just i can't see it happening just because epcot has gotten so much investment the past few years and i know a lot of fans don't like it you know how it turned out but it's still money and it's still the park has had so much work done in the past few years. I can't see them going in there now and digging stuff up again, but they might, you never know. Now Hollywood studios, you don't think that's going to get anything. Um, for Hollywood studios. Well, here's the thing. It is showcased on the horizons. Um, uh, piece of artwork. And because it shows the Grommets Chinese theater right. for the representation of Hollywood studios, which means something is going to be um, mentioned. Now, what that is, the only thing that I could think of is it would have to be that animation courtyard. Now, with that said, I still don't know the fate of this new Little Mermaid show. They said that they're doing auditions for it, but I don't know how far along they are with it. Is it going to get canceled? Is it going to be put on hold? Are they going to go through with it? And does that Little Mermaid show showcase of what's going to go within um the animation courtyard because th there needs to be something there that th it's it's completely you have that little mermaid building you have the disney junior building and you have the star wars launch bay yeah and they still call it animation courtyard it it, it's, it, it is very much a flex space at this point it looks bad it, it's it's they got to address it and hopefully they do that that's i think that's that should be a priority for them to be honest yeah. with you Will so they do it? The, yeah, no, that's the only area that I could think that they would do. Now, however, I do have two long shots for Hollywood Studios. And one is Aerosmith just recently announced their retirement. Right. Like they completely dead stopped, like right in the middle of their tour. They're not even finishing their tour. There was a, uh, there was a, um, I think we were, were we at Universal? I forget where you're that either at Universal or Epcot. I can't remember. Slimer will remember. But there was a team member or a cast member that overheard us talking about Aerosmith retiring. And she said she was so bummed because she had tickets to go see them. They're null and void. They're, she's getting a refund, but they completely stopped their tour. They they officially retired. So what does that mean for the fate of Rock and Roller Coaster? So the long shot is now eventually we are going to hear about a revamp or a retheme to that ride. But the the long shot is are we going to hear it now? Yeah. So that's but that could be kind of tied into that expansion pad that Slimer and Jack from DSNY were talking about with um them putting a possible vil indoor villains area there, which I think if they go the Fox route, I'm okay with. If it's the classic Disney villains, I still prefer it in Magic Kingdom. Yeah, me too. Yeah, if they go like a different route with the villains, like a like you know a Thanos and Predator and in this kind of uh, approach, you know, for yeah. for villains, okay, Hollywood Studios is a great park if you go that route with villains. But if you do storybook villains like Chernabog, Maleficent, you got to do Magic Kingdom. You got to, yeah. you know. So and yeah. then. Oh, and then my final long shot for Hollywood Studios is the potential of doing something with that area with the Star Cruiser. Yeah, and for that, I know a lot of people want them to repurpose that building. I, I think that you need to bulldoze it. it. It wasn't made for any. It was made for that experience. The outside is hideous, absolutely hideous. You can't dress that pig up. You can't put lipstick yeah. on that pig. You know what I'm saying? You got they got to bulldoze that. Make it. It's pretty close to the park, right? I mean, you can expand. A park like do that or something oh yeah yeah you can literally they could expand out galaxy's edge or they could put in a whole nother new land maybe another new planet for star wars maybe showcase that's what i was kind of thinking of doing what if they did a land per era of star wars so batu focuses on the sequels but then what if they did a land for the originals and then a land for the prequels right exactly and that's the kind of stuff that i want i wanted to see them do the the Star Cruiser was a thing for a year and awesome. If you were able to go, you know, our, our friends, Peter and Kitra from ordinary ventures absolutely loved it. To be fair, a lot of people who actually experienced it did love it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
So it was a cool experience, you know, and it was a limited time thing, basically, you know, but it's time to move on from that era. I don't want them to spirit of Halloween it, you know what I'm saying, where they go in there now and they sort of repurpose this thing into something else. You're always going to know what it was before. And that was such a unique kind of thing. I don't see how they can make that into anything else. And By make turning it, it into a spirit Halloween. Yeah, it there would you be go. much better. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. So no, I think you just bulldoze that thing and you use it. You use it for a theme park expansion or something else. But you no. got you got you got to start over. It's 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 it was too much of a niche idea. Yeah, and to tr and, and to try to shoehorn something else in there, it's not going to feel right. And I think that the reason why that's a long shot is because I think they still have to wait for the um the appropriate time to do something with it. With the they, insurance, it the insurance and a tax write off. I think, which honestly, anyone would do it you know because all that money that they put into it you know gets something back out of it but that's a long shot but if not then i definitely think by d23 2026 we might hear something okay now one final segment i want to i want to kind of talk about and this is more your time to shine george because i'm not as familiar with the cruise lines as you are mm -hmm. i think this is going to be a big expo for cruises i really do i do too we're already getting uh, tidbits from like we, you know, we did a video on the Disney Destiny. Well, we, you did the the whole three parter of the Disney Destiny and all that. Um, I think we're going to hear a lot of stuff here with the with the with the cruise. But what do you think? So for me, for the Horizons kind of poster, they showcase two Disney cruise ships, and for me, now this can kind of go multiple ways. Now they had released all this information. Of the Disney Destiny. Now that could either mean they have more info for us that's going to attach to it, so it kind of makes sense. Um, I do think that we may hear about what the Broadway show is going to be on the Disney Destiny, and if we go by the, um, I think they were pins or patches or something that came in with that Disney Destiny box set that they were sending out to, to influencers and YouTubers and what have you, it showcased Pain and Panic. But as like the theater faces, you know, like the, the theater, I think Hercules is going to be the live stage production on the Disney Destiny. I think so, too. We heard rumors um, like a couple years ago now, maybe a year and a half ago, that Hercules was going to move into the Hyperion. Remember that whole thing? Mm -hmm. Stage show? I remember that. There was probably some truth to that. Maybe not necessarily for the Hyperion, or maybe they were considering it, but they are definitely kind of internally kicking that idea around for a stage show. Now that doesn't necessarily mean they have to go into the Hyperion. It could go into the, into the cruise ship and it probably will, to be honest with you. Yeah. So that's fascinating. Now, as far as the two ships that they were showcasing on the, um, the horizons kind of poster that could even uh, solidify for the Disney adventure. That's going to be in Singapore or possibly the, uh, the OLC Tokyo Japan Disney cruise ship or my long shot for this as I brought it to your attention and we talked about it many times on the channel Disney Cruise Line is still a baby when it comes to the cruise line industry there right. are there's Royal Caribbean Carnival Norwegian there's so many different cruise liners that have 20 25 plus ships Disney I think after the adventure destiny and the olc ship that's only going to be nine ships right which is a lot for right now for disney but compared to all the other cruise liners that's not a whole lot no exactly what if, what if those two cruise ships are two more that are going to be added to the fleet that'll make 11 and i have a theory of where they might go one i wonder if they'll move one out west because I know the Wonder kind of does the, the Baja cruises and the Mexican Riviera cruises, but you guys don't have a cruise ship that's home-based out there. Right. So they kind of do like a Disneyland kind of land and sea, sort of how they do at Walt Disney World. Right. Get, and that may even entice people to stay on Disneyland property. If you do a land and sea vacation, and if there's a port out there, maybe near Anaheim or – you know, maybe not as far down as San Diego. Like Long Beach would be not too bad. Yes, exactly. So if you're staying at a Disneyland hotel and you do a land and sea vacation and you have the Disney Cruise Line pick you up at your hotel 
and take you to your cruise ship, that not only heightens the Disney Cruise Line, but that also heightens butts in the Disney resorts. And it turns Disneyland Resort into a much, much more tourist destination. Yes, which they're I, leaning more towards that anyway. They want that anyway. They want more tourists, you know. Yeah. Not to say they're going to give up on the locals, but they want more tourism. Yeah. Absolutely. And uh, and be quite frank of what I've seen. Now, I, I can't really say 100% because we are dealing with um, tropical storm weather, so I can't really depict if this is what the, the occupancy in the parks at Walt Disney World is right now. But from just what I've seen – Disneyland is kind of kicking Disney World's butt as far as uh, attendance goes. That's just my own thing. So, I mean, Disneyland's on a high track, and they're not that far away from Disney World as far as the numbers go. So we'll have to wait and see. But um, getting back really quick to the other cruise ship, I keep on leaning more towards Brazil. D23 is going to have a D23 fan event, just like how they are in Anaheim, in Brazil. Why is that? Disney just doesn't do things just to do it. There's a purpose behind it. Could they be making a uh, Disney vacation club in Brazil? Or could they possibly be having a Disney cruise in Brazil for South America? So I think, honestly, if we do get two more cruise ships that would total up 11, I think one will go in Brazil and one should if Disney really wants to bank on their buck with land and sea is put a permanent Disney cruise ship on the West coast for Disneyland. Yeah. Fascinating, dude. I, I'm real. I'm the, the one I'm the most curious about is the adventure because that's the one they bought like halfway through the build. Mm -hmm. it, it didn't start off a Disney ship from the get go. They bought it halfway through. I'm curious how they sort of like adjust that to make it a Disney ship. And I, and I think that's what encouraged LLC to kind of dip their toe, no pun intended, into the cruise line industry. Because being that this ship was heavily influenced for the Asian market and it's going to sell out in Singapore, I think LLC is like, oh, if Asia's getting one, we're doing this for sure. But we're going to build it on our terms. <laughs> yeah, that thing is going to be incredible. I'm telling you, that thing is going to be absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. So we'll see. The expo is that. Well, the parks panel is this upcoming sun, a Saturday. Mm -hmm. So by the end of this upcoming weekend, we're gonna know. So we'll it's see, exciting. man. I'm, I'm very excited. I'm very optimistic. Um, I, I know online there's a lot of people that are like heavily. I hate to say it, naysayers of saying, "Oh, here we go." Which I understand. As you had mentioned many times, we've been held up at the altar. So many times Josh Demaro has made and broken promises, actually didn't even make promises. We didn't even really know what he was really making. <laughs> so I, I get the hesitation, but I think now more than ever, I think Disney understands. I think Iger understands, and I think Demaro understands what's at stake here. So yeah. let's just kind of just give a little bit of the bone and then see what happens. And then if not, then we will know for sure. Yeah. It's a and, lost cause. And, and in the corporate Game of Thrones chess game that's going on right now for the CEO position, Demaro knows he's got to he's got to deliver. He can't have another disappointing expo. It is literally his promotion or potential promotion depends on it. He's got to go out there and throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink. You know what I'm saying? He's got to really make fans happy. And that's what that's another thing that's keeping me motivated here because I think because his job is on the line kind of, you'll see him make moves. Yeah. And speaking of the kitchen sink, another long shot that I would love to see is put Beauty and the Beast into one of the domestic parks. I don't care where you put it. Put it in Disneyland. Put it in Magic Kingdom. Put it in Hollywood Studios. Put it somewhere. But I would love to see a Beauty and the Beast ride attraction i still don't know why we have nothing of the renaissance oh that reminds me really quick before we end this kind of going back because we talked about animal kingdom but we didn't talk about the long shots for animal kingdom my two long shots for animal kingdom is um retheming cali river rapids to the jungle book okay that would be interesting and adding in a pride lands for the lion king that's right perfect. off of africa 
perfect. And if you, and honestly, now here's the thing with that. I love that idea. My idea for a Lion King attraction would utilize the Indiana Jones uh, Jeeps. Cause I just think that's perfect for, for, for Lion King. But now you have actual Indiana Jones going in there. Right. So do you do the Jeep thing? You, maybe you could, you'd have to, but you'd have to change it and make it unique to Lion King somehow. I don't know how they change. Maybe they can do next gen technology for those Jeeps or something like that. But I think that ride system or something similar to that is how you go about a Lion King attraction. The, the Jeeps, that kind of safari kind of vibe energy is how you approach Lion King. I agree. Um, or they can take a Jeep, but maybe not do it like the Indiana Jones. Maybe they can have like a different kind of ride system, but utilize a Jeep. In right, a right. Yeah. Um, and they can be bigger Jeeps or something or something to, to, to make it different, you know? Yeah. Um, but I still don't know why the Renaissance era films have not been showcased in the domestic Disney parks. I don't know why. Because as I said, now I, I have high hopes for the Lion King. It would fit now that would fit in well with uh, Animal Kingdom, but because that Paris may be getting that, they may be. I don't know if they'll be doing because Paris doesn't fall under the the restrictions that the Asian and Japan parks do. I think Paris is separate. If I'm not, mistaken. it is. Here's the thing: Disney likes to build things into, so it's possible. The issue though is it's kind of like the DCA issue. Animal Kingdom is already kind of earmarked for kind of a lot, or uh, from what we kind of know with the tropical America. I mean, a whole land. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming a need ticket with Encanto, a, a re a retheming, which is basically a rebuild of to turn that thing in, into Indiana Jones. Then to go, hey, we're also going to do this big e ticket for Lion King. It seems like a lot in one park because especially you also you have to remember they're not just doing Animal Kingdom. They got to do Beyond Big Thunder too. Right. But at the same time, there's actually one that we forgot at Magic Kingdom, and that's Moana over on Adventure. Oh, that's right. So if they do Moana, so if you look at each park, there's multiples in each park. So and they're, and they're not going to want to skimp on Moana. Like I think the Moana, I'm surprised we forgot that one. That's like in my pretty pretty close to confirmed column so if they confirm moana then does that mean big thunder still stays as a blue sky concept like now when i say that they're still going to do beyond big thunder but the ideas of what's going to go in it are they going to still be they they might they might kick the can with big thunder and they might because moana is huge dude and they got moana 2 coming out in november which will probably be a billion dollar movie you know what i'm saying another billion dollar movie for disney this year you know um it wouldn't surprise me if if they put the Moana thing in there, they fast track that, and Beyond Big Thunder gets kicked down the road a little bit. That wouldn't no. surprise me. I totally forgot about Moana, but that's that's a leading contender, big time. Yeah. Is there any chance they put they put Moana Beyond Big Thunder and kill two birds with one stone, or no? Is that too weird? Well, no, actually, Slimer mentioned that way before they even was considering even a Moana attraction. He, when he actually mentioned about utilizing Tom Sawyer Island and adding like the Wayfinder boats kind of attached to it. Um, yeah, they might. Actually, we're all thinking Moana is going to go in Adventureland, which it still very well could be. I yeah, think it, it could. Fit much better. But who's really to say that that concept art that they were utilizing for Animal Kingdom now, of course, it kind of looked like a little bit of a log flume kind of ride. I don't know if they'll do that right next to Tiana's. Um, but just that notion of having that same boat system like they're going to have with Pandora. And the well, the, well, the patent, though, for that log system is completely different than than Tiana's. Though. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because it, it like turned – I think it was something in there where it like kind of like turns your log and faces you to certain sh uh, show scenes and things like that. So it's kind of like almost like the Shanghai Pirates, but log flume. Okay. So it might that might be enough of a difference where they're like, we can put it in the same park. Same I don't know. Park. But I didn't actually think of that. That actually might go beyond Big Thunder. They may kill two birds with one stone. They might, dude. They might do that. They might put Moana back there. Now I agree with you. I think it works better in Adventureland, but you know, if they if they make like the, it's like a mini kind of like Polynesian land back there or something. It could work. Yeah. 
We'll see, dude. Um, a lot of interesting stuff. We'll see how correct or how really, really wrong we are <laughs> come Saturday. So we'll see. But George the Italiano, um, it's good to have you back on the show, brother. If you could let everybody at home know where they can find you on social media, sir. Absolutely. And it's glad to be, I'm glad to be back. So um, yeah, you can find me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Disney George. You could also find me on uh, Instagram under the Disney Italiano. And of course, you can find me right here on my home base at Orange Grove 55 with Citrus Corner with all that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. Sticky, sticky, sticky. Thank y'all so much for watching this episode of OG55. Comment down below with all your final predictions. We're just days away now from the D23 Ultimate Fan Event. That's a mouthful. I, I, I prefer the Expo, you know. But yeah, they should just call it the Expo. It's, it's, it's the Expo, you know. But we're just days away. Comment down below with your final predictions for Disneyland Resort, for the Walt Disney World Resort, for the cruise lines. I know we didn't dip into the international parks, but if you have predictions for those as well, by all means, comment down below. Uh, we've been getting a lot of great feedback on the channel lately with comments and everything. We appreciate you guys and gals so, so much. The memberships are really, really growing. We just hit 50 membership. Well, now we're like pushing 60, which is crazy. But um, we're going to be producing a lot of membership exclusive stuff what, like around the time of the expo. So keep an eye out for that. But yeah, we do appreciate everybody and their support. We do understand here that there is so much competition out there for eyeballs, whether it be on YouTube, whether it be on streaming services or whatever. So, you you know, the fact that you take the time to watch George and I and the amazing uh, crew here at OG55, you know, with, with Slimer and Ebba and, you know, Mr. Seymour Duck and, and Alia and Jay Shear, every, all, the whole team. It's an honor to, for, to all of us that you guys are, are taking the time to watch us. So thank you so much. But uh, uh, any, go ahead, George. I do apologize. Oh, and really quick. Yeah. And it, I echo your your statement completely. And also, that's why I'm also down here at Walt Disney World. I also took a lot of footage and uh, we're going to try to uh, put them into uh, videos for you for uh, members only. Um, it may be a slight delay just because of what all that's going on. We got a packed week. Um, so if you are a member or you're thinking of becoming a member, stay tuned because you're going to have a ton of content coming at you uh, in the coming weeks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you all so much for watching this episode of OG 55 D 23 on the horizon. We're going to get a lot of news. I think on this one, it's exciting. It's very exciting until the next time, everybody. Take care. Like iced tea, I'm OG. Like iced tea, I'm OG. Like iced tea, I'm OG. I'm demon. Like iced tea, got mold juice and high C.